is the most southerly of the Greek islands, and with views like that, it's crying out to be explored. Driving's definitely the best way to get around the island, as it's much bigger than you'd think, about 160 miles from east to west. Now, I appreciate when you come on holiday, you just want to relax and lie in your sun lounger. But please, try to motivate yourself and come inland. You'll get to see sights like that. This is the Samaria Gorge. They describe it as Europe's equivalent to the Grand Canyon. It really is worth a look. And if you've got the energy, you can actually trek through the gorge. It's 10 miles. It takes about five to six hours, depending on how fast you walk. But think of it this way, tanning and toning at the same time. Brilliant. Top tips though, good walking shoes, plenty of water and get there early to avoid the heat. Back on the north coast, the most visited inland destination is the Lazito Plateau with its spectacular views and a chance to stumble upon a slice of real Crete. Agios Nicolaos was once a sleepy little harbour town but has since grown into one of the most popular resorts in Crete, especially so for British holidaymakers. The big attraction here is the lake in the centre of the town. Now, according to folklore, it is rumoured to be bottomless, although that has since been proved otherwise. However, it still makes a nice story, brings in the tourists, and it's pretty to sit around. The walks around the town are a joy. You get the perfect mix of tourists and local, plus plenty of shopping for bargain jewellery and crafts. Agios Nicolae certainly is more relaxed, laid back and peaceful compared to all the other noisy and fast-paced resorts around Crete. Instantly when I arrived here, I felt I'd found a, an elegant and more cosmopolitan Greek holiday hotspot. Just down the road from Agios Nicolaos is the exclusive resort of Alunda, where you can take a boat trip with a difference. The island of Spinalonga, a former Venetian fortress and more recently a leper colony. A bit of history and a good story to tell everyone back home. There's something really eerie about this place. I love walking around ruins. I find it really interesting. But I've got to tell you, today, it's over 90 degrees. There is no breeze. And at this minute, that looks more inviting. The hottest months to come here are July and August, when temperatures can soar to above 100 degrees. So in that heat, you definitely need to cool off. Nice. Because of its sheer size, you really need to make a huge effort if you want to experience the real Crete. But no matter where you are on the island, you're never far from beauty like this. We travelled to Crete with Thomas Cook and stayed at the four-star Iberostar Mirabello Beach.